Hi, welcome to a video that's going to teach you how to calculate the price of a bond issued at a discount using this calculator. In addition, we'll talk about how awesome this guy is. My name is Kyle Welch. I'm your Corona accountant. Go ahead, grab your calculator. As a reminder, uh, we are using this BA2 Plus calculator. This is a bond. It has a couple features. For example, there is this face value amount right here, and then there's this coupon rate. The coupons are right down here. We've talked about this in prior videos. We're gonna talk about how you calculate the value of this bond, all right? And what we're focusing on today is a bond issued at a discount. So this one, the market decides that the risk of the bond is greater than what's on the coupon rate. How can we think about this? Well, hopefully you've seen this show, Tiger Kings, all right? Because somehow, they got all like, so there's a distribution of humans on the planet, right? There's the normal, like average people. And then there's these people at the tail ends of the distribution. Um, everybody in this show, everybody in Tiger King is at the very, very tippy tippy end of it. And it's just unbelievable. If you haven't watched the series, it's unbelievable. So these people are crazy, right? So there's this guy, Joe Exotic. Not every day that a zookeeper went to prison for murder for hire. My name's Joe Exotic and this is Sarge. He was like a mythical character who owned 1,200 tigers and lions and bears and sh Other people that work for him, she's crazy. If he ever had an enemy in his life, it was Carol Baskin. Hey, all you cool cats and kittens, it's Carol at Big Cat Rescue. Carol is the Mother Teresa of cats. This guy's a total crook. This guy's a drug lord. Why they say that on the prototype for Scarface. This guy, oh, you gotta watch the show. This guy, <laughs> this guy's a nice guy, but he does an entire interview with his shirt off in his living room, just like, they're doing a documentary and he just got to show up. Anyway, everyone in the everyone in this show is um, a huge liability, huge risk, right? They're not, these are, this is not like the upper echelon type of place. And so if somebody like this was to issue debt, it would be more risky, right? So the, the reason why I'm bringing it up is because I love this show. And also it's a good example of just like people that would be really risky to issue debt. So... Uh, imagine there was a bond and they came out and they said, oh, our debt's worth, you know, a uh, return we're willing to give is about a 10% return. Well, the market traded the debt and said, do you know what? The return, 10% is not enough. You're riskier than that. We need more. And so this is a problem that kind of represent that, represents that scenario. It's very simplified. A lot of times it'll be put into a text, but this enables you to, this is to teach you how to use the calculator. So you're looking for the face value of the bond, the par value of that bond. And the par value is 1000. We're going to call that the FV, future value. This is the future payment. This is the payment at the end of the period. All right. So face value, future value uh, of the bond. This is what they'll pay at the end. Coupon rate, 10%. 10% is the coupon rate. So we take 1000 times 0 0.10 and that equals $100 is equal to the payment PMT. All right. Paid annually. Paid annually means there's one payment per year. Payment per year. Maturity is five years with one payment per year. That means the N is equal to five. The return the market demands on the bond is 12%. That is the interest rate per year, all right? So what is the book value of the bond? Well, let's pull out our calculator. This is a, the emulator for the TI uh, Texas Instrument BA2+. Plus. It's a great calculator. It's the one I use for this class. And the first thing we want to do when we're putting in the calculation is we want to clear out all the values. So go second, uh, clear time value, and that makes it so that clear time value is there. And then we go second, clear work. That makes sure the whole thing is clear. And then we want to check to make sure we're at the end of period, right? So you go second end BGN, and it makes sure that we're at end of period. If you need to change that, you go second set uh, to go back and forth, all right? Then you go second quit to get out of there. All right, and now we're ready to plug and chug. What we do is we put the future value in, that 1,000 is the FV. The payment is this 100 right here. So this 100, and we press payment, and it says payment equals 100, all right? And then we say, uh, then let's do paid annually, the payments per year, well, that's P over Y up here. So we gotta go second, P over Y equals one. That's good. If you need to change it, you'd press one, and enter, and then second quit, that'd get out and get you out of there. And then we need to go to N, N equals five. So this is the N button right here. So we press five and then N, N equals five. 
And now, if this is the interest rate per year, the interest, the I over Y interest rate per year, well, we press 12 and I over Y. And what we get when we do this computation is, we go compute present value. We have a present value of 928. It's 927.9. And uh, I know you're all gonna be really worried about getting the decimals right. And so we usually round on these. So if we were to do this, we'd say the present value or PV is equal to 928. And that matches what we have in our calculator. All right, so that's the present value. That's how much cash the market is gonna give us if we issue a bond like this. So let's go through the journal entries on what we got. So this is the cash amount that we get. Well, what's the journal entry? So, all right, so let's go through the journal entry for doing this. So let's write down a few things that we know. We know the present value. The present value is equal to $928. We know the future value. Future value that we're gonna have to pay equals $1,000, right? That's the future amount we're gonna have to pay. The payments per year, payments was equal to $100. And our interest rate per year, interest I over Y, was equal to $12, 12 oh, I'm sorry, 12%, was equal to 12%, okay? So we have our interest per year, we have our payments of 100, we have our future value that we're gonna have to pay of 1,000, and then the present value, um, this is the current value of 928. So what's the journal entry? Well, when we issue the bond, we start with getting cash. And how much cash should we get for that bond? We got $928. We got $928. And we also know that we're gonna have this future payment and we're calling this bonds payable of 1,000. And that's because what's written in the contract is 1,000. We're gonna have to pay 1,000. So we got cash of 928, bonds payable of 1,000. And you can already guess where this is going. They don't match up. So we have to make an entry to kind of make it match up uh, so that the values balance. All right, we got cash and we have to pay a thousand. So we have this contra liability account called discount, discount on bonds payable. And that's gonna be $72, all right? That's the net difference between the thousand and 928, all right? And so that is the journal entry on the issuance of the bond. That's what we write down when we issue the bond. Okay, so January 1st, that is the entry. All right, so let's do the journal entry for the first payment of that coupon. Well, uh, and you know what, let's write that entry down here uh, so that we can just see what the, the, payment, the payments look like. All right, so we have a, a debit of cash of 928. We have two, we have a debit, whoop, we have a debit of discount bonds payable of 72, right? Discount on bonds payable. And then we have a credit and the credit is bonds payable of 1,000. That's our first journal entry, okay? That's the journal entry for our first payment. And we're gonna use this T account over here to track our discount on bonds payable. Okay, now we have our first payment. Now what you're gonna be tempted to do is to say, well, we have a cash distribution. So we got credit of cash of 100. Cash is leaving, right? This is going down. So cash is leaving, our assets are going. So cash, of 100 is leaving. So we know we have a credit of cash. Cash credit of 100, all right? And what you're gonna be tempted to do is to say, well, the way we balance that is we're gonna call that interest expense. And uh, you're in part right, but it doesn't represent the full amount of interest on that. What we need to do is figure out what the amount of that interest expense is. Well, our discount on bonds payable, this T account we have over here, is gonna have, it has a net balance of 72. And the amount we paid for the bond originally, was the amount that, that uh, we have to pay in the future is 1,000, right? So 1,000 net, so minus this 72, equals 928. Now, you, what you're gonna be tempted to do is just say, oh, I'm just gonna take 928 and use that for my interest expense calculation. Don't. You should always do this discount on bonds payable because I always ask you about the following entries. And if you do simply take the 928 from before for the second and third journal entries, you'll get them wrong. 
You'll see what I mean in a second. So that 928, we need to take that times our 12%, and that equals $111. That is our interest expense. So our interest expense, $111. That's what we put on our income statement. The world's not in balance. We need another credit, right? What's our other credit gonna be? Well, the other credit in this entry is to our discount on bonds payable, and that is gonna be for $11, all right? And we want to keep track of that on the T account. So the $11. And so by doing that, we're reducing this account on bonds payable. So the net amount is 61 now. The net amount of the discount on bonds payable is 61. This is payment number one. All right. So let's do the journal entry for the second payment. The journal entry for the second payment. Oh, let's put it up here. So we have a discount on bonds payable. And I'm amortizing the discount on bonds payable, not the bonds payable account. It's a discount on bonds payable, and it's going to be written off by 11 for this period. So this is payment PMT number one. That's what this entry is here. Okay. All right. So let's go through and go to the next entry. The next entry is going to be for the next payment. So we have five entries total. So this one's cash, right, of 100. And we know we're going to have an interest expense because it's just like the one before because it's just a year later. But we have to figure out what that interest expense amount is. All right, so let's set it up here. We're going to interest expense. And it's not 111 anymore. It's different because we have a different amount. So we have a, we're going to have a credit. And that credit is going to be for cash of 100, just like before. And then we're going to have a second credit. For that discount. But we don't know what the discount is and we don't know what the interest expense is because we have a new calculation. You know how we did this in this problem up here? Well, guess what? We do the same thing. Instead of 1,000 minus 72, it's 1,000 minus 61. You see from over here. The 61 minus 1,000 equals 93.9. All right. And we take that times the interest rate times 12, 113. So 113, all right? So that's what our interest expense is, 113. And as you can imagine, our discount on bonds payable will be 13 that we write off for that period and we amortize off and we're slowly peeling away at that discount on bonds payable equals a balance of 48, all right? Equals a balance of 48. So that's the payment number two. And I'm gonna try to do these all on this and it's gonna be really tight because we have uh, three more payments to do. So you just keep going and we do the same. So we have cash of 100. Uh, oh, and I didn't put the discount here. Discount of 13, an interest expense of 113. And so our cash is 100. We're going to have another discount here on bonds. And then we're going to have interest expense. And I'm just going to write out the next. So we have three here. We're going to have five. So interest expense. So that's five payments there. We're going to have five more discounts. Right. And I'm just going fast uh, to save time on this. So this is payment. Uh, uh, this is the first payment. This is the second payment. This is the third payment. This is the fourth payment. And on the fifth payment, we're gonna have cash of 100 plus cash of the thousand, right? So for the, the discount. So let's get to, we'll get to that. The fifth payment we'll do at the very end. And I just wanna, I'll separate them off so that you can see them. All right, so let's figure out the rest of these entries. All right, so uh, for payment number three, all right? Payment number three, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to do that 1,000. Instead of minus 61, we're going to have to minus 48. 952, 952 times 12 percent. All right, 114. And so that's what we're going to have. We're going to have to amortize 14 off of there. Interest expense here. Uh, we're going to have cash. And we're going to have that discount. Discount. So the discount on bonds pay. Oh man, that looks so ugly. You guys get it. I'll make it prettier on the other side. So. Interest expense is going to be this 114, 114. The cash is going to be 100, right, for our credit. And 
then our discount on bonds payable is gonna be 14. So what does that look like? So this is payment number three here, cash. Discount on bonds is gonna be 14, and interest expense is gonna be 114. Payment number four, we're gonna have a debit of interest expense, we're gonna have a credit of cash, and then we're gonna have another credit of discount on bonds payable. Um, our cash, we know what it is, it's gonna be 100. Uh, our interest expense, we gotta do the calculation, we wrote off 14, so 48 minus 14 is 34. And we gotta take, so now we have to take that 1,000 net 34, net our discount, that equals 966. So that 966 times 12% equals 115.92, so we're gonna call it 116. All right, so our interest expense is 116, and our discount on bonds payable will be 16. And so we write off 16 from this. And now we get to the final entry, the final payment, payment five, payment five. Now in payment five, don't forget, you have a coupon payment and you have to pay back that original $1,000, that right there. People always forget that. They always forget it. All right, so let's start off. We know what we're gonna debit. We know we're gonna have an interest expense like before. And we know we're gonna have cash that's going out. And we know we're gonna have some sort of discount on bonds payable because we gotta write off the rest of that account. We have cash here. So the cash is equal to 100, but also don't forget that 1,000. So it's gonna be 1,100, all right? That's the total cash, because we're paying back the face value of the bond, the, the par value that was on the, that was on the bond document. Uh, interest expense, well, what we have to do is we have to take that 34 net to 16, that 34 net 16, 34 net 16 is 18. And if we take, and so this is for payment number five, we take that 1,000, right, minus the 18 from below. That 1,000 minus 18 equals 982. We multiply that by the interest rate, and we end up with a number that is about what's left, that 18. So it's 117.84. So we're gonna round it, and we're gonna call it 118. And the discount on bonds payable will be the 18, that will be written down here. I don't know if you can see it, but that's the 18 right there at the very bottom. And all of a sudden, all of our discounts on bonds payable, they're all gone. They've, they've all been written off. Everything's been written off. We wrote down the 72, and then through every period, we wrote off, we wrote off, we wrote off, and now the discount's gone. But things aren't in balance because we have this 1,000 here, and we have this interest expense of 118 and this 18. We have $1,000 we need to, to, to debit. Well, where do we debit that? That is this bonds payable. If you pay your bonds, they get paid off at the end. So uh, the bonds payable, bonds, whoop, bonds pay, this is not discount on bonds payable, this is bonds payable of 1,000 is also gonna be written off. So that 1,000 plus 18 equals 1,100 plus 18. That's how you get through all the payments and the journal entries for a bond issued at a discount. Join us in the next video where we talk about how to do the journal entries and the calculation for a bond that is issued at a premium.